All right, everybody, welcome to GG9 Live. Hope you guys are ready to have a lot of fun tonight over the next 90 or so minutes. My name is Jerry 9 and we are about to play a little bit of trivia on my YouTube channel. I've been showing off my football knowledge to you guys, and now it's time to flip the tables and see what you guys say, because this is a game show unlike anything else out there. This game is going to be you guys in the driver's seat, and you're going to have the opportunity to display your football knowledge and win cash prizes while doing so. Before we start, thank you so much, Ranger Hanky, for the $10 donation. Increase the prize pool to 50 bucks. More on that later. Apologies, I couldn't do uh, trivia last week. Uh, wasn't feeling the best. Plus, we had a lot of free agency news that I had to get videos out for. So, had to put it on the back burner. But we are back today with tonight's game. Now, how the game works is like this. First off, you're going to need a Twitch account to play and win. If you don't have a Twitch account, you've got some time to sign up for one while I go over the rules and the format of the game. Also, you are going to have to follow me in order to win, because if you win the game and you're not following me, I can send you private messages about the payment, so make sure to hit that follow button down below. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you so much. It is a simulcast on YouTube. Unfortunately, there is no way to actually play on YouTube. You will want to head over to Twitch. That link is pinned up top. Completely free to play, completely free to win, but you will want to head over to Twitch and create an account. Now, how the game works is like this. We are going to play four preliminary rounds of multiple choice trivia. Each round will have 10 questions. Each question will have four possible answers. Your job is to pick the right one and click the right answer on your computer or your mobile device. You get points for answering correctly, but you lose points for an incorrect answer. So be smart about how fast you buzz in or if you buzz in at all, just keep that in mind. You get more points for answering fast. So if you answer the question in two seconds, your total increases significantly more than if you answer in 13 seconds and you will have 15 seconds to answer each question. I know some people are thinking that there is no incentive whatsoever to look up the answers online since you're only slowing down yourself and you're significantly limiting the number of points that you can receive. Now, at the end of each round, whoever is the winner advances to the championship. You have to win the round to make it, win or go home. We are going to do this for four rounds, and assuming we have no duplicate winners or ties, we're going to have at least four players in the championship, but we have room for a few more, and how are we getting any extra players, you may ask? Well, that is where the donations come into play. Now, before we go any further, I just want to emphasize... That this is a completely free game. You do not need to pay anything whatsoever to play or win the cash prize. But if you do want to pay, this could be of interest to you. Now, throughout the night, you can donate by clicking the donate button down below or pinned at the top of the comment. It will direct you to a Streamlabs website. Whoever donates 20 bucks or more automatically makes it to the final. If you donate less than 20 bucks, you get a play and a play and knock around HQ trivia style where the last one standing gets the final spot. If you donate between $10 and $19, you get a special power up. And how the power-up works is that as long as you come inside the top five in any of the rounds after you donate, you automatically make it to the final that way. So just something to keep in mind. Now, why donate other than the fact that you get a pass to the final? Well, that's because the winner of the 10-question multiple choice championship amongst our finalists wins 50% of all the donations. The larger the pot, the more money you have a chance of winning. It all depends on how much gets donated. I'll update everything manually as the night goes on. We'll have a five-minute halftime break and a five-minute break entering the final round. So why you can do it throughout the night if you want. You can do it during those times as well. But again, I want to emphasize this. Completely free game. You do not need to pay anything to play or win the cash prize. You can donate nothing and still win. But obviously, the more money in the pool, the more money you have a chance at winning. Tonight, we've already got 50 bucks in the pot thanks to a very generous donation from Ranger Hanky. And that can increase as the night goes on. So with all that being said... Are there any questions in the chat about how the game works? Um, I should note, if you're a first-time player, welcome to the stream. We do this every single Wednesday night where we play live NFL trivia for cash prizes. Completely free to play, completely free to win. Uh, remember that all the winners go on to the final automatically, and then after that, any donations count toward the final pot as well. Um, if you are a first-time player, there should be something on the top right corner of your screen, so see your name on the leaderboard. Click on that box, then click Grant Permission, or click on the black box on the right side, the quiz kit box. Click Manage Access and Grant Permission. Otherwise, I have no way of identifying who you are. You just show up as anonymous. On top of that, um, if you are playing, thank you so much. On mobile, it works. On desktop, it works. Computer, it works. It doesn't work on tablet. It doesn't work on TV. I don't know why, but it does not work on tablet. So if you are on tablet, you might want to search over to this device. And again, if you're on YouTube, thank you so much. It's a simulcast on YouTube. You'll want to head over to Twitch to play there. I want to do some NFL trivia. All right, WWE Jacob, you're going to get your wish. You are going to get your wish. How's it going, everyone? I see Summer. I see Brumu36, Todd Hawley, Benjamin on YouTube. Went to Mets Marlins today. Lost. Yeah, um, at least it wasn't a real game. Uh, why does God hate me? <laughs> yeah. 
forcing you get to 3 in the morning to watch the bullpen collapse just like last year. Aye, aye, aye. Gonna be cloudy in Ohio in April. Is that when the solar eclipse is happening? That would stink. That would stink. All right. So, with all that being said, this first round is called opening kickoff. It's how every game of JG9 Live starts. There is no central theme whatsoever to the questions. They can be about anything and everything relating to the NFL, so we're going to be going all over the place for this one. Can everyone see the quiz kit thing on their screen? Because that's how you answer the questions. You don't type it in the chat. You click the answer on the screen. Um, what happened to Virginia? I mean, they they didn't deserve to be in the tournament. They didn't deserve to be in the tournament. They had a bad offense all season, and we we knew that was going to happen. They were going to lay an egg. That was so bad. All four excited. So finally, going to be able to catch a stream. That's awesome, Neil. That's awesome. Jackson Powers Johnson or Cedric Van Pelt for the Bears center pick. I would take JPJ at this point. All right. Uh, if you can't say the quiz skip thing, please let me know. What Huey Lewis song did, What song did Huey Lewis cover in 2000? Was that Cruisin'? I, think, I know he covered Cruisin'. I don't know if that was in 2000 or not. He covered. He's covered a lot of songs. A lot of soul songs. I think I think it was Cruisin'. I think that was like his last like decent hit. All right, let's do this. Let's get this spread. Good luck to everyone, and here we go. Question number one. Let's do it. What is the only NFC South team to not play in multiple Super Bowls? Is it the Bucks, the Falcons, the Panthers, or the Saints? Again, click the right answer on your computer or your mobile device. The faster you answer, the more points you can receive or lose if you get it wrong. If you don't know, you can skip it. Sometimes skipping is your best play. You don't get any points, but you don't lose any points either. You have the Otani situation. Holy cow. It's like the easiest job in the world, and all you have to do is just not steal money. <sighs> Crazy. And again, click the answer on the screen. That was typing in the chat. Hey, G, hope you're well, brother. Sir G, G fam, Michael Hoda with the five. Thank you so much. Now in Sao Paulo, about to head to Sao Luis here in Brazil. So you made it there safely. Hopefully everything went well. Guess what day it is? Oh, you know it. You know it. Saints, right answer here. Chargers should not be content with Easton Stick being the backup. You're telling me you didn't like that game against the Raiders? Where they didn't cross, like, what was it, the, the 40, their own 40 until midway through the third quarter? You're telling me you didn't like that game? You know, Easton 6 not that good. I will go for Tannehill, honestly. Tannehill's still available. He's a quality backup. What's the only team that head coach Nick Sirianni has faced twice in the playoffs? Is it the Bucks, the Niners, the Vikings, or the Seahawks? Chiefs, Mount Rushmore, Mahomes, Derek Thomas, Kelsey, and Tony Gonzalez. Oh, it's tough to leave out Len Dawson. I would take Kelsey out and put in Len Dawson, but that's a good Mount Rushmore. That's a good Mount Rushmore. Who am I rooting for the tournament? Oh, Florida. Not even close. It's Florida. Buccaneers, right answer here. I think UNC wins it all. Whatever teams drive down the price of the final four tickets, because right now it's like 550 bucks. I'm going no matter what, but... They, they usually drop once teams get eliminated. If Arizona gets eliminated, they'll plummet. Two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle Javon Hargrave has played for three teams in his NFL career. Who's the other one out? Steelers, Niners, Browns, or Eagles? Is Bama overseeded? Um, it's not as egregious as some other ones. I think Gonzaga's overseeded. Gonzaga's a five-save C line of St. Mary's. I don't know what they were thinking there. According to an article from Essentially Sports, NFL head coaches call the combine a waste of time. I wouldn't call it a waste of time. I mean, you get an interview with the prospects, network. I don't think it's a waste of time. Now, if you're going off of just combine stuff, that's crazy. Yeah, did the Bucks play too? Yeah, they played in two. The, the question was, who's the only team to, to not play in multiple? Yeah, who's the only team to not play in multiple? And it was the Saints. This one is the Browns. He's never played for the Browns. The Eagles against the Bucks. Oh, man. Both games were terrible. Both games were terrible. You have a JMU being Wisconsin? I'm going to fill my bracket later tonight. And I'll post the bracket group on... It'll be very late. I'll post the bracket group on the community tab on YouTube and on my Twitter. So be sure to join once I do that. I still have to fill the bracket. Question number four. Uh, the 34-31 win over the Cowboys in the 2016 Divisional. Three Packers scored a touchdown. Who's the one now? Is it Cobb, Rodgers, Cook, or Montgomery? Right, right, the Bucks. Wait, I think you misread the, the question. The only team to not play in multiple. The Saints played in mul the Saints played in one, the Bucks played in two. So the Bucks were not the right answer. The Saints were 
you know, two is multiple. You're right. Randall Cobb is the right answer here. No, the Bucks, the Panthers, and the Falcons played in multiple. The Saints have not. The Saints were the right answer for that one. First time catching was which? How's it going, uh, Ethra's Beast? UConn, New Mexico, Kentucky, TCU, Final Four. Oh, that is bold. I don't know about Kentucky this year. Question five. Three players in Colts history have won AP Defensive Rookie of the Year. All three played what positions? Linebacker, DB, DE, or DT? Yeah, thank you for tuning in, Ethra. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, I don't know who I even have yet. I don't even know who I have. I'm going to have... I'm going to have Florida in the Elite Eight. Florida losing in the Elite Eight is the most Florida thing ever. So, you know what they could do this year? I'm going to have Florida in the Elite Eight. All right. Right answer here is linebacker. Shaq Leonard, Maxwell, and Bickett. Ravens can't be content with Johnson and Cunningham. Yeah, 40-plus-year-old Josh Johnson, Malik Cunningham, who can't really throw the football that well. They got it. They got to upgrade. They got to upgrade it back up, especially because Lamar is injury prone. J main first smile high lefty and second ranger Hanky Scotty J Wex, rounding up the top five. All right, let's go to question number six. Who in Colorado Boise State? Ooh, I like Mount West this year. I think Boise wins. In 2018, the Chargers went three and one against the AFC North. The lone loss came against what team? Was it the Ravens, Steelers, Bengals, or Browns? Regular season. Regular season. Went three and one. You know, Josh Johnson is somehow still playing. I'm just turning on the fan. Hey, Josh Johnson is still playing. Somehow. I don't know how. He's not that good. He's still playing. And the right answer here. They beat him in the playoffs, but in the regular season they lost to them. It was the Baltimore Ravens 22 to 10. Could not watch much more Madness games because I do not have cable, but I can catch up to what's going on this year. Ah, oh, that stinks. Because the final's on cable this year, too. It's on TBS. That stinks. All right, question number seven. It's a pre-merger question. There's always one of these. You weren't around in 1938. You can't call yourself a real fan. <laughs> what was the only team that switched coaches in the middle of the 1938 season? Was it the Rams, the Dodgers, the Pirates, or the Cardinals? If I made Cerebral X and X were identical videos back then, would I compare 52 to 44 and 53 to 14? I don't know if I do 52 and 44. I don't know if I do that. I would probably... No, 53 to 14? No, 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 no. 14 was a great game. 53 was brutal. No, not even close. Not even close. Uh, Rams, right answer here. What would I do? What would I do for that? Um... Yeah, that's a good question. What would I do for identical? What do you think? Question number eight. Pop culture question. It's one of these. The only song that Bruno Mars performed in the Super Bowl 50 halftime show. Was it Uptown Funk? Was it 24 Karat Magic? Was it That's What I Like? Or is it Locked Out of Heaven? The yeah, Saints with J.K. I mean, he did not play well in the preseason last year. But then again, I don't know who, who you can afford. I don't know who you can afford with that cap situation. But they're in trouble. Backup-wise. They're in trouble, like, starting-wise. Derek Ross not that good. Try to think, which ones would I do identical for? I mean, 20 and 35 seem to be the obvious ones, but it's not it's not the best. Uptown Funk is the right answer here. I also do those identical videos, though. Those are fun. We're really going crazy on the Super Bowl content this year. Oh, wow, 25% for everyone. Perfectly balanced. All right, let's see those scores. Ranger Hanky in first, Smile High Lefty in second, J May in third, J Wex Scotty. Running one, two, three, four, five. Again, the winner of the round takes the first spot in the final. We still have a few more rounds to go after this. Three more rounds. Scores we set the NH round, so if this is your strongest round, don't worry, everything goes back to zero after this. Question number what are we at? Nine. In 2012, the game between what two teams was at one point shown on NBC Sports Network and not NBC proper? So. What Sunday Night Football game was shown on NBC Sports Network at some point? Niners, Seahawks, Packers, Giants, Niners, Pats, or Lions, Packers? Bit of a broadcasting question for this one. They took the game off NBC and moved it to NBC Sports Network for the second quarter. 
It was Niners Patriots. It was Niners Patriots. I might. I think I gotta do a video on that because I don't think I want to have a video on that. I feel like that's right, my alley. I gotta do a video on that. All right, let's see the scores for one question to go. It is Ranger Hanky at first mile high lefty, only 500 points behind J May. Also, right in the running, J Wex, 10,000. No, it wasn't the debate. It was a. It was uh, Obama's speech about Sandy Hook. Question number 10, final question of the round for the first spot in the final for free. Here we go. In 2013, the Jets went 3-1 against the NFC South. The lone loss came against what team? Saints, Bucks, Panthers, Falcons. I should have known also. Ranger Hankey donated 10 bucks. Has the power up. So all I got to do is come to the top five. You got the lead right now. If you win the round, you steal a spot essentially from someone else. But you should be safe barring anything crazy. Trivia question for me. Oh, fire away, W. Fire away. All right, let's see the right answer here. Lone loss was in week 15 to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, no, I'm not picking Purdue. I'm not picking Purdue to make the Final Four. They do look good for them, but I'm not picking them to make the Final Four. I've been burned by them too many times. All right, let's see. Mile High Lefty with the win. Ranger Hankey coming in third. Has the power up. So, Ranger Hankey, you are also moving on to the final. But congratulations, Mile High Lefty, our reigning champion on quite a tear lately. All right. Playing for a $50 cash prize. Oh, did I not ever change the screen? I don't think I ever changed the screen. That's on me. All right. All right, with that being said, time for round number two. We're going to play a little game called Team Roulette. As you guys know, if you played before... Oh, I forgot to change it on YouTube, too. Wow. That was bad. All right, let's try this again. Every game of JG9 Live features this round. How it works is that I randomly spin a wheel. Whatever team it lands on, all 10 questions in that round are going to be about that team. Yeah, I think McCordy's going to move up. The fact that I don't think he's making the move to LA, I think that tells you a lot. All right, let's see what the wheel has in store for us tonight. What team are we doing? We are doing 10 questions on the history of the... Packers. All right, Green Bay Packers. Do we have any Packer fans in the chat? Let's get a Packer helmet here. Why not? We got a little Chester Markle. Chester Markle, member of the uh, the kicker on the Packers, uh, most famous for his 1980 game against the Bears, where he scored a touchdown in overtime, high on coke. Uh, fun, 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 fun stuff. Fun, fun nugget of NFL history, right there. This present secret base isn't on a rewinder on that, but that would be a fun rewinder to do. All right. With that being said, 10 questions on history of the Packers. If you can't see the quiz good thing, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to start this game. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, NBC Sports Network messed it up rebranding it from Versus. Um, I mean, I get it because Versus sounds a bit amateurish versus more like action sports and then NBC when they got the Premier League it's like okay we need like a more serious brand so tell me about Cinderella story how's it going next to Gamer let's do this collective one here we go question number one in their 48-32 win over the Cowboys in January Packers quarterback Jordan Love threw three touchdowns who did not catch one Romeo Dobbs Dontavian Witts Christian Watson or Luke Musgrave After American Family Field gets the renovation, Packers play three games in the season at that stadium. <laughs> yeah, I think the Milwaukee deal is dead in the water. Christian Watson, right answer here. You have, a, you have tomorrow off work to watch a whole day of the tournament on every channel. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to be working Thursday and Friday, but I got all my TVs on. I got four TVs in the studio, and I'm watching all four games while I work. It's going to be awesome. Question number two. It's like, I don't know how to watch sports now without working, besides Jaguars and D-backs when I'm there. In 2018, the Green Bay Packers went 1-3 against the NFC West. The lone win came against what team? Seahawks, Rams, Cardinals, Irons. Not doing trivia since Twitch is messing up for some reason. That's odd. Are you playing on a... Is it with the picture? Is it with... Is it with the quiz skip thing? That's odd. Um, try refreshing. Sometimes that helps. 
If you're playing on mobile, try updating to the latest version of the app. Sometimes that works. I mean, the Malky games made sense back then, um, but once once Lambo got those renovations, it made no sense to do it. Cardinals lost was what got McCarthy canned. The Niners were the right answer here. It was a 33-30 win in Week 6. You know, I saw the Caleb Williams pass. He's going one overall. We all know it. We all know it. He didn't need to do anything in pro <laughs> In the post merger era, who's the only player in Packers history to have a season lean lean receptions? Was it Jordy, Devontae, Greg, or Sterling Sharp? You're also dealing with some Twitch issues as well. The extension's working fine. Yeah, you're not the first person to... I mean, I'm seeing some issues on Twitch on my end too, which is bizarre. The extension's working fine. YouTube's working fine. I'm getting 10,000 kbps. I'm getting green. So I'm not sure what the issue is there. Um... Yeah, the actual stream is a bit weird. Sterling Sharp is right here. So apologies if you're having technical issues. I think it's a Twitch issue, because I'm not... So I'm getting the same thing. Let me just make sure my internet is plugged in all the way. Your Twitch is... Okay. It was just freezing crash for some reason. Let me refresh again. Yeah. Let me just... This is 100% intentional. Hang on. I tried unplugging my Ethernet back in. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's try this. Question number... I'm just going to give it a second. Let everyone refresh. And hopefully that changes stuff. Seems to go to urine now. Okay. Hang on. Yeah, it's bizarre, because I'm getting, like, green all the way around on YouTube and everything. Yeah, Twitch is acting weird right now. That's odd. Okay, we're just going to chug along. Question number four, because the extension's working fine. So we're going to chug along. The Green Bay Packers have spent three first-round picks on players from Ohio State. Who's the on one out? Brockington, Hawk, Workman, or Clark? Do the Vikings get suckered into believing the J.J. McCarthy rumors? I mean, I don't think they got suckered in. I think they... I think they're legit. Yeah, Padres and Dodgers open the season in South Korea games that don't that count, then come back and play exhibition games that don't count, then go back to playing regular season. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that so much. I feel like once the season starts, it starts. It should not there should not be any preseason games after that or spring training. Workman is the right answer here. Vince Workman. He was a round five pick. Vince, adult workman, I do I work in the business factory and do business. <laughs> that would be weird if the Packers signed a guy that just was three guys in a trench coat. I don't know how that would work. Be a fun football player. Question number five. In the Packers, 41-16 went over the Cardinals in the 82 first round. Three Packers scored a touchdown. Who's the odd one out? Lofton, Ivory, Kaufman, or Jefferson? Your quiz kit ain't working. Try refreshing. If you're playing on tablet, it doesn't work on tablet. Uh, if you're playing on computer, it works. Uh, phone, you got to update to the latest version of the app. Anyone watching some NIT or March Madness? Yeah, I got, uh, I got True TV on, waiting for the Boise State game to start. All right, Paul Kaufman, right answer here. Paul Kaufman. Only one person got that one right. Yeah, Paul Kaufman did not score a touchdown that game. Eddie Lee Avery had two. Marquette winning it all. I think they get knocked down the round of 32. My completely unbiased opinion. Now with the plan in first, j in second, mile high lefty in third. That one trips up a lot of people. All right, let's go to question number... What are we at? Six. In 89, the Packers' offense had three Pro Bowlers. Who's the odd one out? Was it Cam Rutgers, Sterling Sharp, Don Mikowski, or Brent Fullwood? It works on tablet? Really? It works on that? They might They might have just added that then. They Because I know people that... that have all, like have said they can't play and I and I ask them are they on tablet and they said yeah and I've that is bizarre I I'm I'm happy if it works on tablet I just they must have just said that just graphics are different Blake Sound does extended string training um no I think I I think fiction I think he'll he'll play right away Ken is the right answer here Sid Hoffman or Sid Freshman. <laughs> 
We know the Vikings are taking a quarterback. We know that at some point. They're not rolling with Sam Darnold as their only option. Question number seven. In 2003, the Packers went 3-1 and one against the AFC West. Lone loss came against what team? Was it the Broncos, Chargers, Chiefs, or the Raiders? Again, click the right answer on the screen. That's the only way it counts. And we'll do halftime after this so we have a chance to catch your breath, stretch your legs for a bit. Apologies there are issues on Twitch with the stream. YouTube, it's working fine. I don't know what the issue is with Twitch. Because it is lagging a bit on my end, too. But it shouldn't be. It should not be at all. Chiefs are the right answer here. Chiefs. It was a 40-34 to 34 loss in week six. All right, question number eight. Now, that was a good reference. That was good. In their 28-24 win over the Lions of the 93 wild card, all three offensive touchdowns were scored by what player? Thompson, Sharp, Bennett, or Clayton. Thoughts on the Olympics doing a Red Zone South stream? I don't get what the big deal is. They, they did it in 2016. They did it in 2020. I mean, it's great to have Scott Hansen on board. Don't get me wrong. But they've done it every... They've done it for the last two Summer Olympics. Problem is that... um. They go to commercial on Gold Zone. I don't know if they're doing that in 2024, but... I mean, maybe not because it's on Peacock. It's going to be behind a paywall, but... They have, um... They've done it before, but they only show, like, certain events. They don't show all the events. Sterling Sharp, right answer here. Yep, he scored all three, including the game winner at the very end. I'll be doing a similar thing with uh, JG Olympiad. I'll be doing a similar thing with JG Olympiad when I stream the Olympics. Yeah, like it now on Twitch. I don't know what, what's happening on, on Twitch right now. I have no clue. Now the planet first. JWX, Mile High, Lefty, BW, Falk, Witty, Baltimore, on rounding up the top five. You agree, man? The final four for women is a bold choice. That's a bold choice. I think everyone's going to scar UConn. I think everyone's going to scar UConn. Question number eight. Nine, I mean. Nine. The Packers have spent three first round picks on players from Wisconsin. Who's the odd one out? Eddie Jankowski, George Pasvan, Earl Gerard, Jim Tent. Yeah, also probably for Michaels. Summer Olympic sport, that's your guilty pleasure. Ooh. I don't know if I have a guilty pleasure Olympic sport. Um... I have a guilty pleasure. Um, I will say I love the... I mean, rugby seven, swimming, beach volleyball. I, I love all the sports for summer with it. It's not like the breakdancing stuff, but... I love, like... I'll watch all the swimming events, 100%. Jim Temp, right answer here. Not a lot of people guessed that one. I don't blame you if you didn't. It's a tough one. You don't lose any points for skipping. Jim Temp was a round two pick. All the guys went to Wisconsin. J. Wex in first round the plan in second. All right. Thoughts on the Jefferson show? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Question 10. In 1997, three Packers on offense made the Pro Bowl. Who's the odd one out? Was it Shimura? Was it Favre? Was it Freeman? Or was it Levins? Who's the jersey I have behind me? I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. There we go. There we go. I don't, I don't think he's talking about the Jeffersons from the 70s. Unless you know that, Joe, because you were... Because he was a middle... He's a middle school right now. <laughs> he's in... Game was a middle school. I don't think he knows the, the Jefferson show. Um, if you're talking about that show, I've never watched it, but... Um, <laughs> there's another show I have no clue. Antonio Freeman, right answer here. I don't want to have trivia. Good night. It's all good, Simon. It's all good. Look, if you're playing this game, you're already in the top 1% of NFL fans. Trust me. Trust me. These questions are hard. These questions are really, really hard. Jay Wax in first wins the round. Jay Wax wins. Man, the plane got it wrong. So Jay Wax moving on. Have I seen the quite on set? I've not seen quite on set yet. I've not seen that. Um,. I will say nothing about what I've seen on Twitter surprises me in the slightest bit. Nothing about it surprises me in the slightest bit. But I will have to see it at some point. Alright. 
So Jaywax, congratulations. You got the second spot in the final. With that being said, we're going to take a halftime break. This is a five-minute break just to stretch your legs, go to the bathroom, and create a spot for, for tonight's show. As a reminder, we got a lot of content on JG9, JG8, JG7. We got JG9 News, a lot of content there. Uh, we got a new video dropping probably like 11.30 tonight. So we're just constantly grinding up videos. You could probably see the Patriots set behind me right here. Uh, that's part of why um, it's set up for that. Because, of um, because yeah, we're going to do that. So, five minutes on the clock again. Any donation of 20 bucks or more automatically gets into the final. 10 to 19. Uh, you automatically get a power-up for rounds three and four. Um, and any donation of under 20 bucks, you automatically make it into the knockout round. So, just something to keep in mind. Five bucks on the clock. Five minutes on the clock, I should say, starting right now. Um, any questions fire in the chat, I'll be happy to answer. Have I addressed Good Morning Football syndication run? Uh, briefly, briefly I did when I did the, um, the first video on GMFB. I did a second one today. Um, I have a big announcement coming this weekend, I want to say, about that. I have a big announcement coming. This is going to be one of my craziest ideas yet, but we got that. Yeah, Tony about it's time for him to go. It's time for him to go. Probably said he, he doesn't know how to adjust. If his offense is bad, he doesn't know how to adjust. Just watch the video about the 63 Giants and 63 Steelers, that playoff scenario, yeah, where the Steelers had, like, way fewer wins than the Giants, and they still control their own destiny to some extent. That was crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 77 Vikes or 68 Eagles and Falcons? Oh. Oh, oh you're combining the Eagles and Falcons? Um, yeah, no, 77 Vikes still win. 77 Vikes still win. The venting last night of Virginia and the NIT got me thinking. Do you think the NCAA is building up to banning all mid-majors from the tournament? Um, I don't think they're doing that. I think that would lose the magic of the tournament. They know that. They know that. People like watching for Cinderella, and you wouldn't have Cinderella if you ban mid-majors. But I don't like the direction we're going in. I don't like the direction we're going in. I've not played out of the Park 25. I've not played out of the Park 25. Give us a hint on the announcement. Um, has to do with... Um, the Saints and the Bengals. It, it does not. I still can't find the footage. But can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh, man. I, I love that. No, the, the hit on the announcement... Um, the hit on the announcement is... If you need a football show to watch in the morning every day... Um, I know Good Morning Football is going on hiatus. You won't be... Uh, you won't have to wait too long. Uh... Yeah, I did see like the um, I did see the Nets to classify. I don't know why you would go live for that. I don't know why the Nets to classify cast did that and they went live for that. Like you don't don't downplay that. Like don't downplay someone's story like that. Like and they they were like, I think it was really just Ned. It wasn't anyone else that was like laughing about it. It was just Ned. It was just odd. Blue Jay Report just posted Russell Wilson could be cut by the Steelers if outperformed by Phil's. I might have to react to that. I might have to do a video on that because that is... I have to read the article after because holy cow, that makes no sense. The Steelers always keep three. Russ is a vet minimum contract. Do you think they're cutting him? The only way they cut him... It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, can I shout your grandma on her sixth marriage? <laughs> I don't know if you're telling the truth next to Gamer. I don't know, but... If if you are, shout out. Shout out. <laughs> no, Jamie Erdahl is still going to be there. It was weird, like, so, if you watch the end of Good Morning Football today, I did a video on this, if you watch the end of GMFB today, um, Jamie Erdahl was leaving to go on maternity leave, which we knew for a while. We knew for a while she was pregnant going on maternity leave, but a typical, like, maternity leave announcement is, having a baby, I'm so grateful for everyone, I can't wait to be back, and I can't wait to be back in the studio with you guys, um, this was not that. This was not that. So Earl was talking about how she's going to miss everyone and how she hopes she did her job well over the last two years. But she announced that she is making the move from New York to Los Angeles. But then she bashed the executives of the NFL saying, look, if you're making this decision, you better be doing it in our best interest and keep the format of the show and keep what made it special. And then Jason McCourty gave her a hug and he said... I don't know what the future holds. Um, I love being next to you for the next two years. I don't know what's happening next. Which is um, odd, because we know that Jamie's making the move to L.A. That's not something you say if you're going to see her again. 
So it seems like McCourty's not making the move. So it's, it's just a giant mess right now. It was like the weirdest maternity leave announcement I've ever seen in my life. Because with all the, the unrest around the show and what's happening behind the scenes, we have no clue. We have no clue what it's going to look like. So it was just bizarre. I, I knew I had to, like, I, I always watch GMFB, but I knew I had to tune in. Like, I was working on the, the video that came out today. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Bears Patriots 1979 with Doug Plank and criticizing the fans. And I had to stop the video because I, I want to watch the maternity announcement live because I knew it was coming. And I was like, oh, God. Like, I don't, I don't know what that was. Well, stream March Madness, um, probably not, 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 not the first two rounds. I might, I might do some stuff later, but I, I don't see it. I don't see it. We'll see. Um, notable NFL players who skipped combine and the pro day. There's not a lot. There's not a lot. Now there are stories of like Deion Sanders, uh, famously with, uh, the Giants offered him like a, like a test to test his intelligence. And Dion was like, what pick do you guys have? <laughs> Giants said what pick they had. And he's like, yeah, I'm not lasting that long. And he just left. So that was cool. Um, that was classic Dion. Does Caleb Williams remind you of Jeff George, a million dollar arm with a 10 cent head? I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen anything with Caleb that says 10 cent head. It's really just speculation from other people. Caleb has not done anything on his own accord that makes me think like 10 cent head. I don't see it. It's just other people speculating. I don't see it. You know, Dan Schneider, a good director, but holy cow. Toxic environment and despicable what he did. Best Super Bowl ever when taking halftime show and announced crew into account? Oh, easily 49. Easily. Easily Super Bowl 49. When you take the halftime show, the announcing, the game, 49. Hands down. I don't even think there's a close second. Honestly, I don't think there's a close second. When you take all the elements into account, I think 49 wins hands down. All right, we're going to do round number three. This is a game called Middleman. How this game works is like this. I am going to uh, say a... What am I going to do? I'm going to say a year. I'm going to say the player that got drafted before and the player got drafted after. Your job is to tell me who got drafted in the middle. You got to pick the middleman. As an example, if I said 2020... Two, no, 2021, 2021, Trevor Lawrence playing Trey Lance, you would say Zach Wilson. Does everyone get how this game works? Does everyone get how this game works? And you won't have to worry about like random picks. Everything's going to be inside the top 10. So I won't be asking like, okay, pick 200, 201, 202. No, you're going to, it's going to be inside the top 10. How's it going, Broski? Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Pretty sure folks are Googling how to pronounce Duquesne. My favorite is, is if you look at the Google searches for what channel is True TV on, it's like a flat line and then it spikes up for one, like three days a year. Okay, give another example. Yeah, so um, this past season, Bryce Young, blank, Will Anderson. You would say CJ Stroud. And I'd, I would say one, two, three. I'll give you the numbers too of what it was. Um, so you won't have to guess on the numbers. I'll tell you like, okay, so you have to just say what that traffic was. All right. Let's do this. Good luck to everyone. Here we go. Question. Oh, wait. I have to load up the quiz. I should load up the quiz. You could have watched the second half of 49 because your NBC affiliate transfer went out several minutes of the third quarter and didn't come back until after the game ended. Oh, that sucks, man. That stinks. Oh, man. Like, streaming did exist, but it wasn't as crazy. It's crazy, like, the evolution in streaming, like, from my freshman year of college versus now. It's like, holy cow. And that was only, like, Eight, nine years ago? It's crazy. All right, middleman, let's do this. Good luck to everyone. We're going to go question number one for the third free spot in the final. 2021, J.C. Horn blank Devontae Smith, 8, 9, 10. So basically, who was the ninth pick? Who was in between Horn and Smith? Was it Patrick Sertan, Rayshon Slater, Justin Fields, or Micah Parsons? You have grambling me like we want to know in NCAA tournament games. <laughs> Man, I hate playing in the first four, but win's a win. When does it win? All right. Right answer here. Patrick Sertan. Okay, assuming the Texans take Aaron Donald and the Rams take Khalil Mack, who do the Jags take in a redraft in 2014? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Who would they take? I mean, I got to figure out the needs. The needs on the team. 
back then. Um, question number two. 2016, Carson Wentz blank, Zeke Elliott, 234. Was it Joey Bosa, Jalen Ramsey, Larry Tunzel, or Jared Goff? I would probably say in a redraft. I mean, considering Justin Blackman was AWOL at that point, Jags drafted a lot of receivers that year. They drafted Mark Hastley and Allen Robinson in round two. Um, I would say they'd probably go Devontae Adams. I would probably say they would have taken Devontae in a redraft. Joey Bosa, right answer here. Because you'd be going into 2014, because you're, you're going into the 23rd, you're ending 2013 with Mike Brown, Ace Sanders as your top, and Cecil Shorts as your top three receivers. So you're probably going wide receiver. Question number three. 2010, Russell Okugan blank, Rolanda McLean, 678. Was it Hayden, Williamsbury, or Spiller? What NFL team has the most ties? I would guess Chicago. I would guess the Bears. Has to be a team that, that's been around forever. And played before overtime was a thing. Dormouth has the longest sensibility tournament clinch drought. They last made it in 59. Wow. My team's never made it. My team has never made it. Still waiting. Still waiting. Oh, man. One of these days. One of these days, hopefully. Joe Hayden, right answer here. Oh, most ties in a season? Yeah, mo yeah, most ties in a season. Was there a team that went seven zero and six? I think the Bears. I think I think the Bears had like six ties one year. Right answer was Joe Hayden. Question number four. Two thousand four. Kellen Winslow, blank. D'Angelo Hall, six seven eight. Sean Taylor, Ben Roethlisberger, Reggie Williams, Roy Williams. Seventy Chargers, six three Steelers. Ooh, um, I would go seventy Chargers. I would go seventy Chargers. That's tough. Yeah, we had Alan Hearns and Alan Robinson. Yeah, they were the same year. So Hearns was an undrafted free agent that year, and Robinson was a second-round pick. In that NFL squares game, immaculate Rick, he used the same player for two different squares a game? No, once you use it, you lose it. Otherwise, it'd be super easy. Otherwise, I could just use, like, Ryan Fitzpatrick for, like, half the grade. <laughs> no, once you use it, you lose it. Yeah, 933, 7-1-6. There we go. There we go. I do know my 30 says three. Roy Williams, right answer here. Roy Williams was the seventh pick. You know, I love Alan Hearns. Favorite memory of him was him getting injured in 2017 against the Chargers and hobbling off the field on his knees so we didn't we didn't have to burn a 10-second... Uh, we didn't have to use 10-second runoff. Like, that was the gutsiest play I've seen a Jaguar make. Ever. That was crazy. 1994, Sam Adams, blank, Jameer Miller, 8-9-10. Aaron Glenn, Trev Alberts, Bryant Young, Antonio Langham. Has the NFL Competition Committee ever passed a rule in which the NFLPA filed a grievance over? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. But we're going to cover a lot of rule changes on JG9 News over the next week. Yeah, what's the worst division in NFL history? Yeah, 70 AFC West, most ties, single division. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a bizarre one. I think every team had three, except I think the Chiefs were seven, five, and two. But every other team had three, I think. Or the Raiders might have had two. Antonio Langham, right answer here. Let's see the scores at the halfway point. Paul Topper, Ryan McGovern, BW Fox, Jimmy P, Red Rhino. We're sufficient also might be 70 AFC Central. Because the Bengals were one and six at the halfway point, and they won the division. Question number six. 1991. Mike Kroll, Blank, Eric Swan, 456. Stanley Richards, Todd Light, Bruce Pickens, and Juan Davis. Players who had issue in 93 were CBS Up and NBC for the AFC package, but the NFL wouldn't accept it. I'm not sure the whole story on that. I do I do have an interesting video um, at some point. I don't know when it's going to happen, but at some point, the NFL was considering realigning the divisions to make it geographic-based in... I think 81. I think 81. Because of the energy crisis. Roselle was like, you know what? We're, we're, we might just realign the divisions to make it more geographically centered because the energy crisis is killing us. Todd White, right answer here. You love JJ News? Check it every single day. Thank you so much, Barbara. It means a lot. Thank you so, so much. You know, I love, I love posting on there.
Question number seven. 1988, Tim Brown, Blank, Dave Cadigan, 678. Sterling Sharp, Eric Moore, Michael Irvin, Tara McDaniel. CBS paid more, but the NFL said they could only bid on one package. That would make sense, yeah. Yeah, hip drop tackle ban. Hopefully it doesn't go through. I mean, do you think the, the referees can properly enforce that? How many guys are going to get fined for doing the hip drop tackle, too? I mean, I did a video on the, um... I did a video on the, um... On that that just came out about two hours ago. Yeah, a lot of stuff on, um... A lot of stuff on JG9 News. A lot of stuff. We post, like, five videos a day on there. Sterling Sharp, right answer here. You know, stream is... No, you're, you're not alone. You're not alone, Exagamer. The stream is... On Twitch, it's very weird. I don't know why, why it's doing that. 1984. Dean Steincooler. Blank. Kenny Jackson. 234. Carl Banks. Bill Moss. Mossy Kate. Irving Fryer. That's awesome, Summer. That is awesome. They're going to reevaluate their system. Bennett's going to reevaluate their system. I mean, he should have done it years ago. <laughs> Are the Padres the New York Giants of baseball this season? Uh, I would say they're the Broncos. They went all in, didn't work out, and now they're selling and just, they're kind of a mess. I'd say they're the Broncos. Carl Banks, right answer here. Weakest division in NFL history? I'd probably say... 2020 NFC East. I'd probably go 2020 NFC East. Paul Topper, Ryan McGovern, running 1-2. 100,000 point rule is in play. All right. Question number nine. Lamb Jones, blank, Bruce Clark. 2-3-4 in 1980. Was it Curtis Dickey, Curtis Screw, Anthony Munoz, or Mark Haynes? Why the trade for Dylan Seas? Because he's... He's a great pitcher, and he's on the younger side of things, and you uh, you didn't have to give a whole lot, relatively speaking. All right, the right answer here. The third pick of the draft that year, one of the greatest tackles, offensive linemen of all time, Bengals' Anthony Munoz. Well, if the 7 17 made the playoffs in uh, 1970, well, it could have happened if the because second place in the AFC Central was 7 7, first place was 8 and 6. So, it could have happened. I don't think anything would have changed. Ryan the Governor first, Paul Topper. Okay, you just got to get this barely right and you're in. Oh, man. Question number 10. 1972, Willie Buchanan, blank Jerome Barkham, 7 8 9. Amar Rashad. Jerry, Roy Smith, or Franco Harris? Yeah, that, that NFC... Not NFC. NL West is just stacked this year. D-backs improved, but so are the Dodgers and so are the Giants. It's like... It stinks as, like, I know as, as a D-backs fan. Like, we improved a ton. We spent a lot of money. All our holes are fixed. We're good to go. And yet we still have no shot at winning the division. It's crazy. Roy Smith. Right answer here. All right, let's see. Ryan McGovern in first. Paul Topper gets the 100,000 points he needs. So both of you moving on. So congratulations to both of you. I know I'm saying it's a hypothetical, but think of non-conference non matchup for college hoops, ASU and high point. Who comes out on top? I would guess ASU. I can't remember an instance of high point beating a power conference team. I don't think it's ever happened. I don't think since they joined D1 that it's ever happened. We've come close. Remember a game against NC State back in 2015? Cat Barber hit a game-winning three with no time left. Uh, they played some good games this year. Uh, they played Pitt close a few years ago, but I for, I don't think High Point's ever beaten a Power 5 or Power 16. So, I would say ASU. All right. 
Final round in the preliminaries. Again, after the... Oh, not that. Final round in the preliminaries. Um, again, as a reminder, this is the last free way to make the final. If you don't qualify via this round, you can still play, still hang out. You just won't be eligible to win the cash prize. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can play, hang out, do all that. I uh, just won't be eligible for the cash prize. This final preliminary round is called Sowing the Seed. How this game works is like this. I name a team. You tell me what seed they were in the playoffs. As an easy example, 2007 Patriots, you would say one seed. 85 Bears, you would say a one seed. Does everyone know how this game works? I name a team. You tell me what seed they were. Winner of this round takes the second, or takes the final spot in the final. First shot as things stand at that $50 cash prize as things stand. Should the Mons go for Montgomery? Yeah, I think Montgomery can play. I like Montgomery. All right, let's do this. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, I think I think the Celtics win it all this year. The Celtics are just oh man. I watched those games against the Suns. They they are on another level this year, Boston. They're gonna run through the East. I mean, I I don't see maybe Milwaukee with the way they're playing lately under Doc with the defense playing better, but I I can't see anyone testing Boston the first two rounds. All right. Well, 6-7 Cowboys, that wasn't seeding at that point. Um, there weren't seeds until 1975. So. Let's see. this. question number one. Let's do it. 2022 Giants. Were they a 4, 5, 6, or 7? Fact or fiction, Zank Greinke returns to Houston. Um, that's an interesting one. I'm going to say fiction. I don't know where he's going to wind up. Yeah, I thirty seven downtown San Antonio. Oh man, that would be. I'm guessing it'll be a traffic nightmare. I guess it'll be a traffic nightmare. You know, seating didn't exist until seventy five. It, it was predetermined. That's why the Dolphins in seventy two were on the road for the uh, the AFC Championship against Pittsburgh. It was all predetermined. Six seed, right answer here. You know, there were there were no seeds back then. Before 75, it was it was such a stupid rule. Before 75, it was basically... It, it was predetermined in terms of who would play who. East would play West, Central would play Wild Card, and the sites were predetermined. Question number two. 2018 Patriots, were they a 1, 2, 3, or 4? Last NBA Finals appearance was 2009. No, they, uh... No, they, they played the Warriors a few years ago. No, they played the, the Warriors... In the finals two years ago. Do I think Otani was complicit in his habit? No! Oh god, no. No, why why would Otani tell his interpreter to lose his money? That doesn't make any sense. No, I don't I don't I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Two C rights are here. They should be a favorite though. I mean he's he's been one of the worst signings of all time. Ninety-five Braves and Indians best record in their league set to open on the road in the LCS. Yeah. Question number three. Twenty thirteen Panthers were they a one, two, three, or four? Well, LDS used to be best of five, and it was the first two games were on the road. The final three were at home. Twenty thirteen Panthers. What seed were they? Two seed. Right answer here. Ryan with Otani? No, his interpreter got fired from the his interpreter got fired. Apparently he bet two million dollars and stole money. Illegally. Question number four. Oh nine Cardinals, two, three, four, five. Yeah, things were predetermined um, and home field advantage until 98 minutes. Yeah. At least I got... I get it for baseball, at least. I get it for baseball just because... Like, for like the World Series, you're not playing everyone until... Like, you're not, you're not playing that same league until interleague. And interleague didn't exist back then. So at least I get that. If 94 World Series, no strike, uh, Expos. I think the Expos win. 
Thoughts on Bell Stick on Gooey Butter Cake? I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Fourth seed, right answer here. Moreno and Otani didn't deserve a $500 million contract. I mean, I'm not sure anyone deserves a $500 million contract, but if anyone does, it's him. Question number five. Oh, Blue Ice Cream. Oh, okay. O2 Colts, 2345. I've never had. I've never had. I ha I haven't seen any photos of that. Where were the Colts in 2002? Idiot kicker. <laughs> there you go, Mike Vanerjack. There you go. You have a Petamang's alt account right there. Right answer here. This was given against the Jets. I did video on this game. The broadcasting controversy with ABC not sending... Specific crew. Five seed. Right answer here. All right. Let's see the scores at the halfway point. Oh, we got a lot of people above 100K. A lot of people above 100K. A lot of people above 100K. 100,000 point rule is in play. You score 100,000 in the round, you automatically make it. Let's see what happens here. Question number six. 97 Jags. Were they a three, four, five, or six? Will the quiet on set documentary be the turning point to get Dan Schneider behind bars? Um, I think it would have happened by this point. I think it would have happened by this point. You were, you were at that 97 Jags game. Yeah, I mean, that was a bloodbath. That was an absolute bloodbath of the game. I like the 96 game a lot better. <laughs> five seed right answer here. They were five seed. Yeah, 81 Reds. Yeah, that was split season nonsense. That was split season nonsense. Question number seven. 1992 Washington. Three, four, five, or six. When lens is over, I'm going to be seeing what I missed on the channels the last few weeks. Cannot wait. NBC better prepare themselves. Oh, you missed a lot. <laughs> you missed... Um, I mean, besides the video every single day on there's JG nine news. We put out at least a hundred videos. I'm not even exaggerating six seed right answer here. I did a video on their Clemson scenario a while ago. Yes, I did. That was a bizarre video. That was like... That somehow got like 400,000 views. I don't know how. You know, with JJ9 News, since Lens started, we, we've gotten like 3,000 subscribers, which is awesome. We've posted... Oh, man. Um, how many videos have we posted? It's something in the... It, it, it is something in the... In just about 100 videos. Question number eight. 89 Giants. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't know what is going on with the street. Like, the extension's working fine. YouTube's working fine. I'm getting... Like, my internet... I, I think it's a Twitch issue. Because I do, like, internet speed test. And I have absurdly fast internet. Like, absurdly fast. Like, let's see right now what we're at. Yeah, over 930 Mbps. That's my download speed. Two seed, right answer here. Yeah, 89 Giants, we're good. Flipper Anderson with the um, touchdown at the end. You know, Jada News, it's it's taken off. Which is great, because, like, I just sit in front of the camera and I talk. It's, it's awesome. It's like, I'm just doing what I do with friends, except I just do it in front of the camera. And you guys seem to love it. And I can put out so many videos, too. It's awesome. Mile High Lefty in first, Beauty Fox in second, Paul Topper. Ooh, you're close to that 69420, as is Ranger Hanky. Question number nine. 83 Rams, two, three, four, or five. Playoffs are broken. I mean, for MLB, they're not broken. No, MLB, they're not broken. No, I think six is a fair amount. Yeah, internet can be super fast, so the computer can't do the coding for two simultaneous streams on separate platforms and one still calls issues. That is true. I mean, it hasn't had that issue before. 
It has to have... Oh no no! So the the, the simulcast for the post game science streams that that was different. Um, five C answer that was different because my internet was not that fast, and on top of that, um, that was my laptop. That was my my baby laptop. This is a a MacBook, like this is a Mac Studio. And we haven't had this issue before. We haven't had this issue before, so I don't know what the issue is here. Breakfast club, yeah. Mile high BW fuck running one two. Paul Topper, you are close. You are close. Will Fox do for the leadout program to 59? Ooh. Um, I would guess they would do Mass Singer like they did Super 54. That would seem to make sense. Question number 10. 75 Vikes. 1, 2, 3, or 4. Or no, no. They probably do the floor. You know, they probably do the floor. My guess is that you start the floor. Yeah, that, that that made my pick. You go with the floor. I think NFL fan I think like sports fans get very competitive about that if they get into that. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Alright, right answer here is they were the number one seed. Yeah, Terzian, the referee. The referee that got pelted. One seed, right answer here. To test the NBA playing round, you're not alone. You are not alone there. Alright. Let's see what we got. Who's moving on? We got Mile High and BW Fox moving on. So congratulations to the two of you. Mile High was already in. BW Fox, you're moving on. So I'm just gonna put your name in there. Because Mile Healthy, you are already in 143,000. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. T time out. I didn't even notice that. Hang on a second. Hang on. Wait a second. Hang on. Wait. Wait, hang on a second. I didn't even notice that your score was that high. Hang on. Folks, um, that is, officially speaking, the third highest score in the history of this game. Mile High Lefty, oddly enough, sowing the seed, 143,765 one time, 143,421 this time. The record is 146,939 in a particular round. But that is the third highest score of all time. That is history right there. 143,421 out of a possible 150K. Holy cow. Congratulations. Holy cow. Pat on the back right there. Third highest score. This is game 169. We played 169 games. There was five rounds in each game. So this is the 844th round we've ever played in trivia. 844th mini game round. That's the rec that's the third highest score. Wow. Congratulations, Mile High. That is insane. I was like just scroll through the score. I'm like, congratulations to the two of you. You're in. Um and I'm like, oh. Crap, wait, that score is really, really high. High score versus 146. Uh, we played a game called Final Foe. And uh, Benjamin had 146.939. That's insane. That's insane. All right. With that being said, we're going to take a five-minute break. Any questions, fire away in the chat. I'll be happy to answer. Again, 20 bucks or more gets into follow automatically. Less than 20 playing that play and knock around HQ trivia style. Where the last one sitting gets the final spot. As of now, no one is in the knockout round because Ranger Hanky won. Um, Ranger Hanky got a power up, so Ranger Hanky is in. So as I said, no one in the knockout round. But uh, if you uh, if you want to get in on the action, fifty bucks in the pot to our winner. Did Drew Pearson push? Not anything more than previous receivers on a play like that. Now I don't think it was a push. Love empty seats for NIT game at Villanova. I'm not watching, but I'm not surprised. Again, mid, uh, big schools don't care for the NIT. William Hung comeback album would sell well in 2024. No. I don't think it would have. I don't think it would. All right. 
Thanks for stopping by, Todd. Again, anyone can play in the final round, even if you're not going to pay and get into the final that way. You just won't be eligible for the cash prize. But nothing stopping you from playing, hanging out. Um, and just something to keep in mind. I should also note, again, we got videos on JG9 News all the time, and JG9 new video coming out tomorrow. Not, not sure what's going to be on just yet. I still have to do some Patreon requests and membership requests. Those are coming. Uh, but get into them. But get into them. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them we got to do. Um, but we're getting to them. Slowly but surely, we're getting to them. And documentaries coming and whatnot. I got to do a documentary again. I haven't done one in a bit. But it's happening. It's happening. Um, if Rogers became RFK Jr.'s running mate, would the NFL not allow him to play during election season? No, there's nothing that says he can't do it. There's nothing that says in the CBA. Now, granted, I don't think they ever planned for that, but there's nothing in the CBA that says, or in the player code of conduct that says he can't endorse a candidate or can't run for office. There's nothing in there. You can you can totally do it. Coolest halftime show stage would say Madonna. Um, that was a cool stage. Um, I mean, Katy Perry used a lot of, like, technology with her stage. In terms of, like, the actual stage design, the show itself was not good, but Super Bowl 38 stage was incredible. The Super Bowl 38 stage was nuts. I love that stage. It was incredible. McCartney is on. Meredith make a guest voice appearance on. I would guess King of the Hill. I would guess just Cowboys. I, I would guess King of the Hill. The coolest halftime show stage, yeah. Um, Super Bowl 38 was a crazy cool stage. I would also say... You're just talking the stage. We're not talking, like, the... Like, on the field, like... If you use technology or anything like that. Beyonce's stage was bizarre. Like, with the two faces. But that, that was kind of cool. The Black Eyed Peas moving stage with love. That, that would have been cool if it worked. Did I know the 90... 1944 Giants sell the fewest points. I did not know that. No, I did not know that. Also, The Who. I mean, that stage was awesome. I mean, granted, it was just their logo, and the show was kind of bad, but... Rolling Stone is also a phenomenal stage. Bad show, but phenomenal stage. But it, that's just their logo. I'm not sure that counts. The stage is just someone's logo. I'm not sure that counts in the discussion. U2 stage. And that, that was really just a circle, though. That was really just a circle. Or a heart. That wasn't really... I'm not knocking the show, but in terms of, like, coolest stages of all time, I mean, that, that was just a... a circle. Wasn't really anything crazy about that one. A really narrow circle, but a circle nonetheless. All right. Worst MLB postseason managerial decision on your mind in recent years? <sighs> Orioles, Blue Jays. <laughs> Orioles, Blue Jays. Oh, what on earth were they thinking? Orioles, Blue Jays. One of the dumbest decisions. And we, like, that was one that was like, I, I watched that live. I'm like, what are they doing? But if we want to call that recent years, I would say Orioles. And the Blue Jays. All right. Let's do this final round. Fourth and gold. Ten questions on anything in NFL history. Fifty bucks in the pot. Pantera, a county band? I mean, country band? No. Not even close. <laughs> All right. Final round. In the final, we have Mile High Lefty, Ranger, Hanky, j Lex, Ryan McGovern, Paul Topper, B.W. Falk. We have uh, 10 questions. Winner of the round amongst the finalists gets the cash prize. Can Mile High Lefty repeat? We will find out. Am I wearing a bracket for March Madness? Yes, I will post it on my Twitter. I will post it on the community tab. 
later tonight. I still have to fill out my bracket. I've not filled out my complete bracket. So, still have to do that. But we will. Here we go. Good luck to everyone, especially our finals. Here we go. Question number one. Four-time Pro Bowl cornerback Chris Harris played for three teams in his career. Who's the other one out? Chiefs, Saints, Broncos, Chargers. How well do I know the UFL teams? I know pretty well. I'm going to do on, on, um, on JG9 News, I'm going to do before the season starts power rankings for the UFL. We're definitely going to do UFL stuff on JG9 News. We're definitely going to do some stuff on that. Especially because I'll be streaming all the games. So it's like, I'm going to know this league inside and out. And we got the studio just about ready and just waiting on a few more helmets. Just waiting on a few more helmets. Chiefs, right answer here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get there in time, but we've got uh, so many helmets as things stand right now in the studio. <laughs> so, um, just right by me right now, we got uh, we got a Washington Federal helmet. Actually, I actually have two of these. I have a white one and a silver one, because why not? Question number two. In 05, the Raiders went 1-3 against the AFC East. Low win was against what team? Dolphins, Pats, Bills, Jets. Oh, yeah, the funniest time decision was by far Aaron Boone not walking Jake Berger. That was incredible. That was incredible. <laughs> I mean, also, I mean, the D-backs won the game, so it didn't matter, but setting could tell Marte when he's very slow on Mookie Betts. <laughs> like, what are you doing there, Chica? I'm not sure. What are you doing? The only 10 days away from the first UFL stream. Oh, man, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get back into the action with that. I've, I've missed live. I've missed doing play by play. I've missed that. It's been two months. I've missed it so much. It's crazy. Bill's right answer here. First eight and sixteen to make the playoffs. Well, the, the Bengals were eight and six. Um, I don't think they were the first though. I think the Vikings were eight and six in sixty eight. If I'm not mistaken. Question three. Only AFC West team that Tony Dungy never faced in the playoffs with head coach of the Colts, Raiders, Broncos, Chargers, or Chiefs. What rock band had a hit with when well, known as Big Brown Beaver? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that one. I would say Ugly Joe, but I have no clue. I have no clue. All right. Right answer here. Oh, it was Primus. Oh, did not know that. Oh, yeah, I had the right idea. I had the right idea. Ugly Joe was 92. Raiders are answer here. Question number four. Steelers country, let's ride Russell Wilson. There you go. Only AFC teams are in the 70s season to miss the playoffs despite a winning record. Browns, Chiefs, Colts, Charters. NFL primetime was 1987 to 2005. 87 week one was the first thing and then 05 was the final season because after that Sunday Night Football went to NBC alright Hat Time Show switches to Popbacks Legacy Acts back to Popbacks and Rock Nation all happened yeah it did happen because Hat Time Show was on CBS though I'm not sure the Rock Nation production happened because of a Hat Time Show on CBS so just a result of it just never happened like I think that, that was going to happen regardless. But obviously the the pop acts, yeah, because Michael Jack because Up With People, not Up With People, Winter Magic, um, Jan Jackson, Justin Timberlake, um, and then The Who was a disaster. Yeah, I'll give you that. Question five. Yeah, Chiefs were 7-5-2 that year. Out of the four QBs to start a game for the Rams in 2002, who starred the fewest number of games? Scott Covington, Jimmy Martin, Mark Bolger, or Kurt Warner? That season, who starred the fewest number of games? What OJ song was covered in 97 as part of Beavis and Butthead's Do America? I've not seen Beavis and Butthead's Do America. I would guess Love Train. I would guess Love Train. That would seem to make the most sense. I would guess Love Train on that. Scott Covington, right answer here. I have not seen the movie, but I would guess it would be their signature song. The NFL Primetime was 87. Ohio players? Oh, I've got no clue there. Fire? It's eight years old where we found Scott Covington existed. And he does. Mile High Lefty. And first. Is Usher is Legacy Act now? Is Usher a Legacy Act? Um. I would say. Yes. I would say yes. 
I, I would define legacy out there as you're still selling records, you're still selling, you're still touring like crazy, you're still selling out arenas, but people sit down when you play the new stuff. That's what I would consider a legacy act to be. If you're sitting down when they're playing the new stuff, you're a legacy. Like, I think at this point, Justin Timberlake's a legacy act. Three-time Pro Bowl offensive lineman Kevin Gogan made two Pro Bowls with the Niners and one with what team? Cowboys, Dolphins, Chargers, Raiders. Aaron Rodgers played the fewest amount of time in a season this year. I mean, I, I think he played in the fewest, yeah, four snaps, I would think. Are the 82 Browns and the 82 Lions the only four and five teams to make playoffs? Yeah, I mean, only season with nine games, so yeah. It have to be. Right, answer here is the Raiders. You're going to do this every Wednesday night on Twitch and YouTube. So be sure to stay tuned every Wednesday night. Have a chance to win some cash prizes. Question number seven. Two-time Pro Bowl wideout Emmanuel Sanders. Played for five teams in his career. He made both Pro Bowls with what team? Steelers, Niners, Broncos, Saints. Yeah, Madonna's Legacy Act. She's been a Legacy Act since I, over a decade at this point. Over a decade. Is it illegal to lie about your age when making an account? <laughs> I mean, you do you. <laughs> Dark Horse MVP candidate in the AL and the NL. Ooh, all right. Bronco is the right answer here. Dark Horse candidate. I don't know what I define as Dark Horse. Like, Corbin Carroll's not a dark horse. Okay, so, okay, so Diamondbacks, I would say Gabby Moreno. I honestly think Gabby was better than Corbin Carroll last year. Um, question number eight. Three-time Pro Bowl John James played for three teams in his career. Who's the odd one out? Saints, Lions, Falcons, Oilers. He's still super young. He's one of the best defensive catchers in baseball. As a dark horse candidate, I would say Gabby Moreno. Again, I don't think he's going to win the MVP, but as a dark horse, I would say Gabby. AL, ooh, that's tough. Um, AL, I would say whoever the best player on the Red Sox would be. If they make a run. Because no one expects them to do anything. Whoever does the best on the Red Sox, if they make a run. What Sidney Loper song got covered by NOJ in 1990? Oh, that's easy. I think, like, no, that was 98. That was time after time. Because NOJ had two hits, Love You Down and Time After Time. I love that cover. That's a great cover of the song. Yeah, but that was time after time. That was 98. Ryan McGovern right answer here. Or Ryan McGovern first, Paul Topper in second. I feel that was a spring of 98. Picks for MVP in the NFL in 2024. I'm going Josh Allen. I'm going Josh Allen. Not, not our Josh Allen. Phil's Josh Allen. If the wardrobe malfunction never happened, would Madonna have done the Super Bowl 40 halftime show? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, she would have been a pick. She would have been definitely a pick. But I'm not sure she would have. It probably would have been like a mix of artists like it always is. Probably been like, like three or four different artists. In 2011, the Cowboys win 3-1 against the NFC West. The low loss was against what team? Rams, Seahawks, Niners, Cardinals. Dumbest NFL rule proposal. Ooh. Um, when Paul Tagliabue was like, you know what we should do? We should split the NFL into three divisions. How would that even work? I guess that was a pretty dumb proposal. I froze. Oh, man. On Twitch. No, I didn't, I didn't freeze. I'm just lagging like always. I don't know why it's doing that. All right, Cardinals, right answer. That was an overtime game. Overtime game against... Yeah, three conferences. That's what I meant. Yeah, three conferences. That was the... That was Patrick Peterson. Punt return touchdown. Overtime. All right. I believe that was also the... Was that the Garrett Icing? Oh, no, that was Stephen Howling touchdown. Was that Garrett Icing as kicker? Game also. Yeah, that was yeah, that was that game. Yeah. Yeah, crazy game. 
All right, Mile High Lefty in first. Look at a repeat. Ryan McGovern in second. Paul Topper in third. Jabber Gover nine. Thank you so much, Sports Set. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it, man. Again, okay, we got content coming up on JG9 News and JG9 all the time. You know, I meant Stephen Sally, yeah. Here we go. Final question. Here we go. The only player in AFL history to win AFL Player of the Year twice. LaMonica. Dawson. Namath, Blanda. College football should have a 68 team playoff. <laughs> uh, that's how you destroy that sport. Injuries would be out the wazoo. What one hit wonder came out with Stanley Sunshine? And, and, oh, come on. Come on. You gotta be. You gotta give me tougher stuff than that. That song's legendary. Steal My Sunshine. That's Len. Of course. Oh, come on. I think they, they blew their entire budget for the music video on drugs. <laughs> so that wasn't even supposed to be the, the video. They had a budget for the video, and then they blew it on drugs. LaMonica writes it here. Who would have done the halftime show if uh, Nipplegate didn't happen? Super 39? I would guess you try and get Outcast as one of the headliners. Only one person got LaMonica right. Paul Topper seems like he got that one right. Did he win? He did! Paul Topper with the comeback! Paul Topper, the only one to get that one right. And Paul Topper... 65,883 wins tonight's game of JG9 Live. Welcome on to tonight's game prize of 50 bucks. Going to be, I believe, 45 once Fable takes its cut. I'll let you know as soon as the stream is done. That concludes tonight's game. I hope you guys have fun playing the channel with me over the last 90 or so minutes. Whether it's your first time watching me or a long time subscriber on my channel, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support. If you want to learn more about NFL history, join my channel by clicking the link below. Don't forget to follow me, Jarrogator9 for. NFL, Jerry Gear 8 for College Football, Jerry Gear 7 for MLB, JG9 News. We got updates all the time on that channel. Follow me on Twitter at Jaguar Gear 9 NFL. We just crossed 4,000 followers on Twitter. Thank you so much for that, guys. It really means a lot. 58,000 subs on JG9, JG9 News. We just started that a few weeks ago, and that's close to 3,000 subs. So, a lot of fun, exciting stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and until next time, JG9 signing off. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your night.